هاي يا جماعة اليوم حتكون آخر درس في الأسيمتريك كريبتوغرافي and okay I will explain in English so the last topic in asymmetric cryptography is about elliptic curve cryptography and elliptic curve is a new math يعني before we uh, our problems were uh, based on factorization problem and uh, DLP problem so discrete log um, problems which are uh, useful uh, in RSA and Diffie-Hillman like in here uh, but uh, elliptic, cre uh, elliptic curve cryptography is a new math uh, intro introduced to the cryptography and it's more used because it's it has better uh, it's better in some cases and not better in other cases like for example in encryption it's not that good right in encryption we like to use a, 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 a symmetric key cryptography but for the key exchange of course we do not want to use a symmetric key cryptography so this is a revision of the last lecture and the review questions of last lecture and uh, this lecture will talk about what elliptic curves are so it will be pure math and uh, what they are in theory then elliptic curve cryptography in practice which will talk about cryptography and how it is used so we will learn the fundamentals of elective elective cur elective elliptic curve cryptography and how it's better than RSA and the Hillman and um, how to choose the right elliptic curve and um, we will just explore some use uh, use uh, some applications of uh, elliptic curve uh, algorithms in key exchange encryption and digital signatures so first of all what is an elliptic curve it is a uh, it is this equation so this equation specifically is called the wire strass curves or form and is the most common elliptic curve form okay so this is just a general view it shows you how when a equals to one to a negative one and uh, b equals to so and b equals to one so okay so this is how it looks like when a equals to negative 1 and b equals to 1. And so it is, uh, this is the sh different shapes when we change the values of a and b. So x cube is always the same, but values a and b change. Here b is 0, for example. Here a is 0. Here a is 0 and b is positive 1. Here a is negative 3 and b is positive 3. And um, here b is 0. So we notice that when b is 0, it is disconnected here in this case when b is 0. So why are they disjoined? I'm not sure if they are disjoined because of the B is 0, but in this case B is 0 and it is disjoined. So why? Um, I think because uh, we cannot divide by 0. And okay. So 
<clears throat> All right, guys. Um, it seems that no, it's not the case that b equals zero. Well, because here we have b equals negative one, and we have a disjoint. Um, it could be because also this is a y square. And if you want to find y, it's plus or minus the square root, right? So you can't really square root a negative equation, right? So it could be the, ca the case that in some cases when b is negative, that the equation also becomes negative, like the value. So you cannot take a square root of the negative, right? So it could be the case. All right, and now this is one of the curves. It's called uh, SECP256K1. Uh, used by Bitcoin. All right, so this is what they use in Bitcoin. And in this case, B is seven and a is zero and x cube is just the same okay so let's see here Mont montgomery curves is another popular form of elliptic curve in this case we have also an x and the b is not like there's no b here the b is the coefficient of y square and um, it's defined by this equation and uh, in cryptography usually we deal with integers right this is why we use integers but when it comes to drawing the curve it's okay you can use fractions right so uh, so uh, they found this curve probably with trial and error it's a montgomery curve it has an x and b is one and a is forty eight thousand and four hundred eighty six thousand six hundred sixty two it's used by open ssh defined by this equation so this is what it looks like and this is the edward curve i think this one is popular also in cryptography in this case we have an a x square plus y x square you know how x square plus y square plus so, uh, equal something this is like a circle equation but in this case we have an a x square plus y x square equal to 1 plus d x square y square so it's more complex and it's one of the recent curves and it is uh, this is the equation of the twisted edward curves which is generalization of edward curves and is one of the commonly used curves in cryptography. In this picture, we have A is 10 and D is 6. Okay, so we have another Edward curve, but in this case, A is 1 and D is 39,081. Okay, so the first one was called just a general curve. This one specifically is curve 448. So it is used in the digital signature, a digital signature algorithm at DSA. So it's defined by this equation. So in cryptography, sometimes they use, like, if if this is used for, 
uh, look with so this used using curve 448 is called ed 448 a variant of uh, the digital the digital signature scan using curve 25519 gives us ed 25519 so i think we should memorize this uh, uh, this um, this rule that if we have an ed dsa and the, using the curve 448 curve 448 then we just take ed and 448 okay and now we have the theory part in cryptography so we know that a trapdoor function as previously explained is something that is easy to make like easy to encrypt but hard to decrypt or the opposite like it's easy to um to to define but very hard to solve like the factorization problem it is easy to just choose any two integers but it is hard to factorize a large big prime number for example okay so it's easy to multiply two prime numbers, but difficult to find prime factors of a number. Okay. Um, PKC is all about finding good trapdoor functions. Right, this is true. RSA has been the algorithm of choice for many years, but they are large. RSA keys are very large. And uh, uh, you know the factorization problem. Now they're advancing, uh, computers are advancing, and one day will come that they will be able to solve factorization problems. This is why we introduce elliptic curve cryptography. And it was introduced by Neil Koblitz and Victor Miller. And it is actually, it was, yani elliptic curves were, it's a very old thing. But, it, yani it, only 15 years after it was discovered, like if it was introduced, Open SSL added it to um, as a standard, and Open SSH added it at 2011, which is even worse. So, only slowly they are be becoming a standard cryptography, and it is used for key exchange and digital signature and public key encryption. But as we said, encryption is rarely used for in using elliptic curve. It's more powerful and efficient than RSA and DH, but it's slightly more complex. So, uh, the uh, elliptic curve uh, uh, cryptography multiplies large numbers to combine points on a mathematical curve. There are many different types of elliptic curves, efficient, inefficient, secure, and insecure. And there's reasons because of course you have to choose the right parameters and the right curve so you have to know these things okay let's just remove this because how does elliptic curve cryptography work so it's about adding points on an elliptic curve over a finite field uh, I'll show you more on that, how it works. Here we are just going to recall what groups are and I don't like the math. It's really difficult. So here it's just that field, field, uh, a field group uh, deals with plus and multiplication is defined uh, with uh, uh, multiplication and addition and here it's distributivity is multiplication over add 
the identity and the inverse and this is the example of real numbers so uh, how can we make an elliptic curve a finite field so we can first define this like uh, this group this is a definition of a group okay group of numbers um, so the elements of the finite field are the points on the curve okay and the inverse of each element is the image about the x-axis okay you know how uh, it is symmetric about the x-axis I forgot to say this but the reason it is symmetric is because we have y square okay so y square which means it should be uh, yani, you know when we make the square root of something we do plus minus because it could be above the x-axis or below the x-axis and the operation is addition it's defined uh, with the addition operation so um, and the rule is that p plus q plus r equals zero we will understand what p q and r are and they are just any three points aligned on whatever line that passes through the curve so we will see this later the three points are aligned then this is the distributivity associativity and commutativity uh, they uh, apply uh, what is left to define a field so the identity in order to, to define a finite field the only one that remains is the identity in the elliptic curve the identity is the point at infinity denoted by big O big O it's not zero how do we add two points over an elliptic curve so if i put a line like this and it passes into three points this is p q and this is r p plus q plus r should equal to zero this is defined as we said before right so locate two points p and q then we want to add them right so what do we do we just draw a line straight line and then we have a p and here it passes through something so it should be r and q so here we have located a third point where the line intersects the curve so it should be that every single line in an elliptic curve must pass at three points so if you tell me what about if i draw a line like wait let me see if i can draw yani let's say if i draw a line like this there's one and there's two so where's the third point well this elliptic curve is infinite it does like this you know like this and of course it doesn't look like this but i'm saying that every single line should pass three points all right so just erase this um Okay, so step four is that first we draw first step we draw a line uh, pass through the two points we want to add then we locate the third point then we take the inverse and what did we say the inverse is just the image and why did we say it, ha it definitely has an image because it is defined uh, it is symmetric about the x-axis okay so then 
we know we defined before previously that p plus q plus r equals zero for any three points on a line which means that p plus q equal minus r right so p plus q equals minus r this is minus r so this is the addition of p plus q okay so okay let's see uh, we want to add مثلا p plus p how do we do that we have infinite lines so we can draw any random line So we have a base point P, draw a line that passes through P, it could be any, inf any one of the infinite lines. Then we can locate the intersection, okay, and then we say that P plus P equals 2P is okay we just draw any line then we find the point of intersection then we take the inverse so first of all we locate a base point P which we want to add to itself then we draw a line passing through P and intersecting with the curve right so locate the point where the line intersects with the curve then P plus P is the inverse of that point okay so how can we find 3P easy we can just simply draw a line that intersects P then the sum of P plus P is just the inverse wait so this is, if we draw a line then we have p plus p is this inverse okay then we want to add to 3p what do we do we then draw a line that intersects P and 2P because 3P equals equals P plus 2P يا جماعة أنا أنا مش عارفة كيف أكتب باللابتوب لأنه لابتوبي مش تاتش ف... let's just not write so احنا already we defined how to add two points together we first we defined how to add one point to itself we did the line then we took the inverse of the intersection then we have 2p now we want to add p with 2p to obtain 3p what do we do we draw a line that intersects p and 2p this is the same as p and q then we will find the intersection point this one this is r then the inverse this one will be 3p 3p this one Alright. Okay, Jamaa. فهمتوا علي يعني يعني نرجع للي درسنا على p plus r p plus q عفوا. So p plus two p بيعط في intersection the third intersection the inverse. Then we have three p. Alright. Elliptic curve cryptography in theory. Okay, so this is just 
explaining what we did before. So we want to add P by itself. Daras nakif. We want to add P plus 2P. P plus 3P, P plus 4P, and all that stuff. Okay? So, بدل ما اوكي نشوف خلينا نشوف هون بدل ما نسوي مثلا هلا لو انا بدي 10p هل يعني انتوا شفتوا كيف البروسيس كثير طويل did you see how the process is really long so if i ask you to find 1000p it's not يعني it's not um, efficient to keep doing that right so what do we do is we we add the point p or like the point مثلاً, 4p then the point 4p to itself we have the point 8p then we add 8p to 2p مثلاً, okay so we have 2p plus 4p plus 8p بيعطينا, or actually 8p plus 2p بيعطينا 10p instead of finding each one by itself يعني why should we add p plus p plus لا we can just find 2p then we use 2p plus 2p we know the point to obtain 4p then we know the point 4p we just add them together to get 8p then we add 8p to 2p بيعطينا 10p so it's much much يعني, only 4 steps we can find 10p which is much less than 10 steps or actually uh, this is nine steps okay what if what if I draw a line and there's no R there's no third point right we studied that P plus Q plus R equals to zero if however we, we also studied that the inverse of every number is the image about the y-axis, right? Uh, sorry, about the x-axis, right? So if we add an inverse to itself, what does it mean? They will give us zero because if, if one is the inverse of negative one, then one plus negative one is zero. So what we say if we intersect exactly between two inverse lines we say that the answer is the identity and the identity is zero for uh, the identity is point at infinity but in in the real numbers one plus negative one is zero which is the identity zero is the identity number which if you add two numbers that are inverse of each other you will get the identity. In this case, adding p plus q, which are two inverse of each other, you will get the identity of this group, which is the point at infinity. Um, what does this mean? The two points are inverses. Okay. If a base point and the point x equals q. Okay, خلنا نشوف هذي. أول إشي we we know the gate the p the base p. Okay, this is uh, 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 يعني everyone knows the base p. Then uh, we have a point x which equals to k multiplied by p, kind of like 10p. This is, and now we're dealing with cryptography. How do we define, like how do we use the elliptic curve in cryptography? So, uh, the end point is x, which is kp, and k is what we use to reach to x, like k multiplied by p. k is secret. Okay, elliptic curve discrete log problem. So it's also discrete log problem because it is the same method. 
in practice the point P is large so adding P to itself K times will result in a point X whose coordinates are way too large to be stored as a public key whose size is usually up to 512 bit so this is why we use hash so So what do we do? Uh, we use the mod. صح. We don't we don't hash. We can hash, but um, uh, for this case, uh, how do we um, cut cut? Like if we have a maximum 512 bit, how do we cut it to be less than 512 bits? Easy. We can just use the mod. We always use the mod, mod modulus. Okay. Uh, so if I use modulus 10, the numbers will always be less than 10. Right? So this is the equation of the elliptic curve mod P. And the limits of the size of our original curve to a prime number p. Such approach is called defining an elliptic curve over a finite field. Right. So we studied that the group must be finite. We can't define a group which is, which is infinite, right? So how do we make it finite? One of the ways to make it finite is by using the modulus function. So we love this modulus function. In cryptography, the most popular finite field is integers mod p, where p is the prime denoted as the greatest factor p, I think. What's gfp? Um, okay. Okay, so in cryptography, we always use discrete values. What does discrete mean? It means that we don't have a curve. We have points, okay? And this is the reason why it looks weird is because this is with the modulus, okay? So we define it over 50, for example, and this is our function defined at at maximum 50 this is all the points okay so if we have a point P and we draw a line and let's say it doesn't pass through any lines what do we do in this case يعني in the curve uh, in the original curve infinite curve um, it was guaranteed that we should pass intersect another line but when we define it using the modulus and it is discrete uh, it is disjoint so how do we know that it will definitely pass through a line the reason we do it is we just repeat the line keeps repeating 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 until repeats until it bumps into a line oh there is actually it bumps into a q we want to add p and q so so the line should intersect p and q and a third point so it will keep looking for a third point until it bumps into R. This is the third point. Okay, so why is elliptic curve introduced? Sorry. The reason is for a security of 112 bits, we need 2448 bits, like a very large key just for this security 
if we want a security of 256 bits, we need 15,360 bit key, just for a key. However, an elliptic curve, it's only double, yani 256, only 512 bits. And this one is more kind of like 10 times or something. Yani. So, um, it's shorter keys in elliptic curve. How does this compare to symmetric key algorithms? Well, in symmetric key, uh, for a security of 112 bits, we just need 112 bits. This is why symmetric key cryptography is not discarded. We always need it. Symmetric key cryptography is always used for encryption. However, it is not used for key exchange. Yeah? The reason why it does not need a large number of bits is because it is a random randomly generated key and these are based on mathematical equations which are not random they can be solved by a computer this one it's random so for 112 bit security we need 112 bit how do we generate keys okay we defined before the equation x is the end point, k is what gives us to the end point, and p is the uh, base that everyone knows, okay? So the public key is x, p, and small p. The private key is k. How did we get to x? Nobody knows. This is the secret private key. Okay, so the steps are first we pick a prime number, then we pick a curve. We use standard ones because uh, if you invent your own, there's a big chance you lose. Uh, they are not all secure, they have to be standard. Then we pick a point at the curve, P mod P. Then we pick a random number K. So then we can find X. Elliptic curve cryptography in practice so uh, we use it for key exchange of course uh, which is uh, yani, we always we like Diffie-Hellman but elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman is better uh, digital signatures it's important in digital signatures so we use ECDSA and EDDSA this is the Edwards curve and this is the elliptic curve digital signature algorithm this one is based on el gamal and this one is based on schnorr okay for encryption we do not use it elliptic curves but we will study elliptic curve in integrated encryption scheme and this is not important but elliptic curve cryptography is usually only used for key exchange and digital signatures. Let's see how it is the elliptic curve based on Diffie-Hellman. Uh, so we, Alice and Bob, they define a base point P and they choose a prime number. Then, Alice will choose a random private key for her, K for Alice. And then, she will find the public key and the secret key. So, the secret key is just the same, the K, A that she chose. And the public key is X. 
x is the her secret key multiply by the public key all right then Bob will find a random private key KB then he will generate his private key which is his secret key is just the KB and his, his public key is the KB multiplied by P so this is the X that we defined previously then what happened they share their, their public keys together so if there's an Eve in here she can know the public key which is X and she can know the base point P and she can know the prime number small p but she can never find Ka and Kb then to find to generate a key pair so they should agree on KAB and this secret KAB the shared key secret shared key is his uh, his public key I mean public key for Bob multiply by her secret key so what will it be so the public key for Bob is KB, SKB, and, and P, big P. And her private key is just KA. So we have KA, KB, and uh, P. And he will have the same thing. Yani, yani, uh, the public key of uh, Alice is contains the contains the secret key of Alice multiply by the P صح? and then the secret key of Bob multiplied by this means that there is KA, KB and, uh, and P, big P so this is explained more clearly here so Alice KAB is just the secret key multiplied by the public key which is KA, KB, P and similarly for Bob okay so this we finished the key exchange so now they exchanged keys now for the uh, digital signatures uh, she will generate a secret key and then she will calculate X or A which is um, the public key which is just K and P her her secret K and P okay so this is the public key and this is the private key okay So everyone knows A, which is KP, but nobody knows K. So how we get to A, nobody knows. So how can we sign the uh, message? So this is how it is. First, we take the hash of the message because the message could be very long. So we just hash the message so it's uh, much shorter. Then um then Alice calculates the signature R and S so R is defined by the equation X sub A mod P and S is defined by the equation the inverse of the key and the hash of the message plus R multiplied by k mod p so if she wants to sign a message she
she first she calculates R and she calculates S. First, she needs to calculate R because R is used in inside the S signature. Okay. So in step three, she sends uh, Bob the public key, which is small k and p. She sends him the message. Then she sends him R, which is x sub a mod p and s equals k inverse h hash of n plus r and k mod p so now we finished the signature how does bob verify this is the correct signature so he knows a he knows the message he knows r he knows s so because the message is really long so he will just hash the message then he knows h of m then he will calculate u1 u2 and t okay let's see u1 is s inverse because he knows s so s inverse multiply by the hash message and mod p and u2 is s inverse r mod p so let's see how this one works then t is u1 p which is well known to everyone plus u2 and a which is the uh, public key for alice and this is where the magic happens where t is a point with the coordinates xt and yt okay so the public key will verify in this way so um if so how he calculated u1 u2 and t then how does he verify if r equals x sub t modulus p and okay so i didn't uh, mention this before x sub a is the x axis the value of the x axis it's the x axis of the uh, of the public key a let's see if this is right x coordinate of a equals the x coordinate of t okay so if x sub a equals to x sub t then r will be valid so it will check does the r value equal to the x coordinate of a which is the public key Okay, guys, now we can just ignore the modulus p to make it more simple. Um, okay, let's just. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see how this works. So, first of all, we know that a equals kp, and we know that t equals u1, p, u2, a. And u1 equals to uh, u1 u1 equals to s inverse hash of m, so s inverse hash of m. So u1 p. So uh, and u2 a. So u2 is the inverse of s r, inverse of s r multiplied by a so we know here we find that the s inverse is a common factor so we take it out 
So S inverse multiplied by the hash of M multiplied by P plus R multiplied by A. Okay. Then we substitute A equal to KP. We know that A equal to KP. So T will equal in this case hash of M P plus R and KP which is A. So we have another common factor which is P. So we can take out P in the right side here. Then uh, we can simplify because S, we know that S equal to K inverse multiplied by the hash of M plus R plus K. Okay, so K inverse multiplied by the hash of M plus, K, plus R plus K. So we will have uh, K inverse multiplied by... Uh, okay, in, in order to get one here, we multiply both sides by S inverse. So uh, S inverse multiplied by S is one. Then uh, K uh, power, uh, so the inverse of K multiplied by the inverse of S multiplied by the hash of M plus R plus uh, R multiplied by K. Then we have k ah oh, we multiply both sides by k okay here we divide by s here we multiply by k so 1 multiplied by k is k then k inverse multiply by k inverse is just 1 then s inverse then the hash of m plus r multiply by k um okay so when we, when we multiply by k, we just multiply, we just remove the k inverse, okay? And then in equation 2, uh, in, uh, sorry, in, uh, okay, in step 4, we have the t, we go back to the t value, which is s inverse hash of m multiplied by r multiplied by a, but we take out the p and we take out the here okay this uh, we are in we go back to this equation and we substitute in uh, equation 2 so t equal u1 u1 is s inverse then hash of m and u2 is s inverse r wait equation 2 ah okay we also substitute K. So K multiplied by P equals U1 P plus U2 A. Um, if this holds, this means that one who created S and R knows K which should only be only Alice. Okay, and I'm finished this part, Saraha. But here it says that we have equation two, which is u one p, which is p one, and u two a, which is u two a. If p, uh, sorry, if k p equals this, then T should equal this. This is, يعني, if KP equals this, then T should equal to this. All right. The film tishishi. So, uh, EDSA is a recent and popular digital scheme based on Edwards curve. 
unlike ECDSA, which is based on El Gamal, ED DSA is based on Schnorr signature key. I already read it The most popular of ED DSA are ED25519, and it uses the SHA-2, and it's called the Curve 25519. Sorry, it's ED25519, uses this curve. And ED448 is based on SHA-3, and it's more uh, recent because it uses SHA-3, and it's based on curve 448. And then, compared to ECDSA and EDDSA, it's generally simpler, more secure, and faster. Okay, so any Ahsan, EDDSA Ahsan, mean ECDSA. It's newer, it is still hasn't been studied as well. Okay. Our issue, the Rasna ECDSA, Hala Bidnanudros, EDDSA for key generation. So, um, First, Alice generates a random number k, okay. Then uh, it finds the hash of the key. So this is the difference in ed DSA, is we take the hash of k, which gives us s, and s is a secret key. A secret, yani k and s are both secret. Uh, the hash is to make the key, I think, uh, shorter or more random. Then, um, it calculates the public key, which is SP. It's the same, same procedure. Then, she will find S and R, but in this case, it's small s and small r, which are secret. So... First of all, R is the hash of S and M. First, we need to find S, which is the hash of K. Then R is the hash of S and M. Then, uh, she calculates big R and big S. So, big R is R multiplied by P, and big S is R plus H, which is the hash of R, A, and M, multiplied by S mod P. So, it contains R and contains S. So, big S contains R, small R, and small S. Uh, big R contains just small R. And small R and small S are secret. Okay, finally, she sends Bob a and M and the signature R and S. So A, M, R and S should be yani, public. I believe. Yani. But for example, H I think is secret. Uh, okay, so la H is the hash of R, A, and M. So never mind what I said. So just S and small r are the secret. Okay, so how does Bob verify? First, he, he receives the A and the M and the R and S signature. Then... He calculates H, which is the hash of R, A, and M. Then he verifies by multiplying S by P and big S. He has big S. He multiplies it by P. He knows P. It's, then it equals to R plus H multiplied by A. So if S multiplied by P equal R plus H multiplied by A, then it will be verified. So let's see how this works. 
um, uh, so we we have s multiplied by p and big s is r plus h uh, multiplied by s so r plus h multiplied by s multiplied by p which is here then we distribute r multiplied by p is rp plus h multiplied by s multiplied by p then r equal to small r and big p so this is r and a equals small s and big p so sp should equal to r plus h plus a the fact that the equation holds means that the signer must have known r and s which means that they have access to the private key k this is the d here and now s is the the hash of key k and r uses s to find any small r is the hash of the s and the message all right hello for encryption we finished key generation and exchange for encryption ecies elliptic curve ies uh, first of all to generate the key um, Bob generates his public and private key so it's the same procedure then he sends his public key to the uh, receiver so he shares his public key then she generates R from the public key then Alice calculates uh, big R equals to uh, the random number multiplied by P and P is public S is the random number multiplied by the public key for Bob then then she uh, will use um, the values s to encrypt the s with the message okay so here to make s more random they use a key derivation function kdf to generate symmetric key based on s then they encrypt the message with s and generate a cipher c then uh, we know that r equals the random number of our alice multiply by p and then she sends it to Bob and she sends it and she sends the cipher text to Bob also. Then how does Bob decrypt? First he will find S because S is the secret uh, uh, the secret key for Bob multiply by R. Um, because r is small r multiplied by p which she gave him so he can just multiply his secret key to the r she gave him then they will obtain r the secret key and p because the secret key for bob is just kb so r and uh, so the public key is kb multiplied by p so this is the public key for bob so r multiply by the public key is just s so if if she if he if he does this he multiplies his secret key with the r he received from alice then he can decrypt by finding s
Okay, then he decrypts using S and the cipher C. Because she encrypts with S and the message to get C, then he decrypts S and the cipher. So, can quantum computers break elliptic curve cryptography? The answer is yes, because it's based on mathematical equations and they can get better at uh, solving mathematical equations. Uh, which algorithm is either easier to break, ERSA or ECC? Um, surprisingly, uh, oh, um, RSA requires more computing power, more logical qubits to uh, break 128-bit security, but uh, requires only 2330 to break ECC. How can we fix elliptic curve cryptography? So we can use post-quantum cryptography. Um, which is super singular elliptic curve isogeny cryptography. So it's like a new cryptography. All right, so this is how easy to break RSA and ECC. With a quantum computer, it's easy. But with uh, symmetric cryptography, you, can, you will need 64 bit and 128 bit. The reason is because AES does not uh, depend on any mathematical equations, so this is why it is resistant even to quantum computers. So elliptic curve is a set of points uh, satisfying an equation. Not all curves are secure. Do not invent your curve, use popular ones. Elliptic curve cryptography problem given a base P and a point X equals KP, find K. This is the problem. And it's more efficient than RSA and DS because the size of uh, 25, 6 bit provides similar security to 3072 bit of RSA. And uh, for key exchange, uh, they use elliptic curve uh, Diffie-Hellman. For digital signatures, there is elliptic curve DSA and add DSA. And for encryption, there is ECIES. And the most modern cryptography primitives are now based on elliptic curve. So, this is used for Bitcoin and Montgomery curves are used for ECDH and this Edward curve is used for ED DSA. So name three forms of elliptic curves can be generated from. Ah, okay. Uh, they mean uh, uh, where where stress and Mont. Gomery curves and Edward curves. State the elliptic curve discrete log problem. Elliptic curve discrete. It, the problem is uh, finding K. And uh, what is the elliptic curve cryptography increasingly becoming preferred over RSA because it's more efficient and gives more security with less uh, mm -hmm. smaller keys and uh, in cryptography elliptic curves are usually defined over the multiplicative cyclic group zp z star p true or false um, Okay, I'm not sure about this. Uh, RSA op operates over integers and operates Diffie-Hellman and Gamal operate over the multiplicative cyclic group ZP star. So, 